Okay guys, you all know that from my Trading 212 series, from my Pi investments that I keep sharing updates with you, I'm a big fan of the Trading 212 platform, but it does have its limitations. Have you ever had a time when you wanted to invest in a smaller cap stock that's not available on the platform? Have you ever wanted to invest in a market where the stocks aren't available in Trading 212? Have you ever wanted to invest in a highly specialized ETF that again isn't available on Trading 212? This has been the case for me a couple of times and when it has, I've turned to my other broker, which is Tejero. Tejero is a low cost European broker with very low commissions and it offers a much wider, much more ample range of ETFs, stocks and markets to invest in. And what I'm going to show you in today's video is my ETF portfolio that I have on a Tejero platform. And three of these ETFs that you're gonna see today are pretty specialized and you will not find them on Trading212, but they are very interesting investments. So let's get right into the video, guys. What's up, guys? My name is Johnny. Welcome to Millennials With Money. I upload content to YouTube on Wednesdays and Sundays, giving you tips on how to take control of your money today to create a bright financial future tomorrow. If you like what you see on the channel, then why not hit the like button, click subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications and become part of the ever-growing Millennials of Money community. So we're going to head over to the computer and we're going to take a look at my portfolio. But just before I show you the portfolio, what I'm going to show you is a little bit of the Tejero interface for those of you who are not familiar with it, so that you can get an idea of the look and feel of the platform. So let's head over to the computer. Okay, welcome to Tejero everyone. Let me give you a quick walk through the platform. Apologies in advance, I wasn't able to change the interface into English, but I will explain everything what's going on and explain what each section is. So in this section here, this gives you an overview of the different world indexes uh, over the course of a day, over however long you want to do it. So here we have the IBEX 35 in Spain, the Eurostox 50, the S&P 500, the CAC 40, you can see Portugal, Italy, these markets aren't available on Trading 212. Just a couple of examples there of other markets that you can see. Then on the right, this section here is called winners and losers. So over the course of the day, you can see which stocks have made the biggest gains and which have made the biggest losses over the course of the day. So right now we're looking at the IBEX 35, so the Spanish index. I can change this here to look at the Amsterdam index, for example, or I can look at the FTSE 100. You can invest in the UK on the Hero as well, which is really good. You've got a little news section down here at the bottom as well. You can change the language. So let's change that to English for you guys. You can see what news we have here. And so there you go, all the kind of economic investing news coming in the feed there. You've got a section here in the middle, kind of relevant news. And then you've got exchange rates um, and futures over here on the right at the bottom. If you want to look for a particular stock or a particular ETF, you've got the search bar up here. So I'm going to search for a previous one. Let's say that I want to look for Prosegur, which is a Spanish stock. So I can find it right here. Then it will take me, of course, to that stock. And I can see the graph. I can see what the price is, how it's performed over the day. And here I've got my buy button and my sell button. And it tells you here about the trading volumes, historical stats, etc. I could mark this stock as a favorite. So if I click the star here, I can say add to favorite. So I will do that. And if I mark that stock as a star and I go to the favorite sheet, you can find it right down here at the bottom, along with other stocks and ETFs that I've marked as favorites. Another way to search for ETFs and stocks is via the product section down at the bottom. So right now I'm looking at stocks, but they also have a section for, so they have bonds. So here I'm looking at bonds, they have investment funds, and you've got tracker ETFs as well. So of course you can use the filters to narrow that down and get the ETFs, the stocks that you want. And then you've got your activity history down here at the side. You've got your orders, transactions, um, your kind of state of accounts to see where you're at, all that kind of stuff. Now let's get on to the interesting stuff. So if I go right here, this is my portfolio. So here are the ETFs that I'm going to talk to you about in today's video. So here the little green and red buttons. So that's buy and sell. We've got the product name here. You can see here what the current trading price is on the market, the currency that it's in, the current value in this column. Here you've got a column called the break even price. And what it essentially shows is the price at which um, you would be neither making a profit or a loss. 
taking into account any commissions that you paid on your investment as well. Then got the plus or minus in euros for the day and the percentage. On the right, we've got potential profits. If I was to close my position here, we've got potential profit and loss based on what my profit would be if I closed the position today right now, taking into account commissions and exchange gain or loss based on changes in exchange rate. And here on the right, we've got the same value in percentage. So the first ETF I'm going to talk to you guys about is the iShares Swiss Dividend ETF, also known as CHDVD, which I mentioned recently in the Switzerland episode of my Tour of Europe stock market series. So why is this ETF so great? So this ETF follows the Swiss market index companies, but it doesn't just pick any company in the index. It picks those that have the top dividend yields in there. So if we go over to the iShares website and we take a look at the holdings, here we can see uh, just a few of the companies that are in there. And then if we go to a website called Dividend Checker and we filter by order, you can see that there's some pretty nice dividend yields there on average starting from 3-4% going all the way up to 7% of dividend yield which is really nice, that's a really nice uh, return there that can be made. And if we go back again and take a look at the key facts you can see here that it is a distributing ETF so that means it pays out dividends. So those nice dividend yields aren't for nothing, that's going to go right into my pocket as an investor, which is <laughs> great news. And another bonus of this ETF here, so if we look at the total expense ratio, that is very, very low, that is 0.15%, which is as low as some of the good Vanguard indexes, some of the other good iShares ETFs, which track the likes of the S&P 500. So very, very nice expense ratio there. So I really like this ETF. If we look at the performance, I'm only up 1% um, so far, but that's because at the time of doing this video, I've only held the ETF for a week. So obviously it needs some time to be able to produce a good return for my portfolio. So one thing I forgot to show you, of course, kind of here's the price of 140 Swiss francs, and here's kind of its performance over one day. And now if we lengthen that out, we can see that's a pretty nicely performing um, ETF over the long term, right? I would say so. Now, if we go back to the portfolio, we have the iShares MSCI Saudi Arabia ETF, which goes by the ticker IKSA if you're investing in dollars or IUSW if you're investing in euros. So many of you watching may be a little puzzled by this one and I would understand it as well. The Middle East is obviously a very volatile region, but it's one that I believe still has a lot of potential for growth. When looking to invest in the Middle East, I found that iShares actually had a wide range of ETFs tracking Middle Eastern stock markets. So besides Saudi Arabia, I found the likes of the UAE, Qatar, I believe Bahrain, iShares provide ETFs for all of these markets and it was actually the UAE that I was initially interested in investing in the ETF but it's not available to investors based in Spain, only the Saudi Arabia one. So of course when I thought about investing in the Saudi Arabia ETF I recognized there was a risky decision particularly given that the economy is largely based around its oil exports which we know the world is shifting towards renewable energy today but that was a risk I was willing to take. Uh, Saudi Arabia I think is actually trying to do something similar to what the UAE is doing and attract foreign investment become a little bit more liberal and open as a country. So it'll be very interesting to see how that goes. And if it pays off, then this could be a really nice return on investment. Before I get in and show you the companies in this ETF, something that is worth pointing out is that on the iShares website, you can take a look at business involvement. So you can see if you're exposed to any potentially controversial activities that companies may be partaking in. And as you can see in the case of Saudi Arabia, um, there's nothing in terms of controversial weapons, uh, firearms, nuclear weapons, or anything that violates kind of the UN's um, unified pact. Now, something I found really exciting about the holdings in this ETF is that it, this ETF gives me exposure to Saudi Arabian oil company, also known as Saudi Aramco which for those of you that don't know, is the world's largest oil company. And in 2019, I believe it was, broke a record for the largest IPO. Obviously the world is moving towards cleaner, more renewable energy sources, but my opinion is that this will not stop Saudi Arabia exporting um, oil. So I think there's still a lot of life left in this to be taken advantage of. There's also exposure to some really nice sectors such as banking, particularly Islamic banking. So you can see here Al-Raji Bank, 
which is actually the world's largest Islamic bank. And in this ETF, it has the greatest weight percentage. And you can also see other sectors. So you've got other banks and you've got a few uh, communications uh, telecom companies in there as well. And along with other petrol companies and industrial sectors. Now, one of the challenges I had with this ETF is that there are volume limitations on Decado, which, uh, as you can probably imagine, it's probably not the most common ETF that is being traded. So it took me actually uh, multiple orders to get to the volume that I wanted. And of course, the way Decado has its commissions, I had to pay two euros each time. So I actually paid some quite expensive um, commissions to get this, but I'm hoping that with Saudi Arabia being um, an up and coming market with um, potential for growth, I'm hoping that the returns will one day make um, the commissions that I've paid worth it. For now, you can see I'm a 10% return, which is not bad, but of course, with time, we hope that that increases. On the next line, you can see the iShares NASDAQ 100 ETF. I won't spend much time on this one. I think everybody knows what it is. The only reason that I have some holdings in my Tejero ETF of this is because at the time, I don't think the Euro quoted ETF was available in Trading212. So I decided to put a lot of money in it on here. Now that on Trading212, there is an Amundi NASDAQ 100 ETF. That was a mouthful. <laughs> Um, I've decided to stop investing uh, the money here in the hero and of course through the um, the Amundi ETF that I have in trading 212 I'm investing regularly in the pie so that is how I'm taking advantage of the Nasdaq 100 and finally we have the crane CSI internet or China internet now if you remember in the trading 212 series on trading 212 there is an iShares China A ETF which is available but I decided to not invest in it because I got exposure to a wide range of sectors in China and I didn't want to be too exposed to China. I preferred to spread my risk across the Asian markets. What I do like in China though is kind of the e-commerce, the internet, the digital sector. So imagine if there was an ETF that tracked these kind of stocks. Here you have it right here. If we go to the Crane Shares website and we take a look at the sector breakdown, you can see there that 60% of these stocks are tech stocks. And you can see a large remainder is made up of discretionary um, spending stocks. So that re refers to e-commerce. And now if we scroll down, we take a look at the top 10 holdings. You can see in there, you've got Tencent Holdings, you've got Alibaba Group, you have JD.com, you've got Baidu. These are some stocks that have enormous potential and imagine them all compiled into one ETF. And if you think about how the China internet revolution is gaining traction and how that could take off over the future. And if we take a look at the returns, you can see in percentage terms, this is by far my best performer. I believe I invested in this over summer 2020. So you can see in the space of about half a year how that's produced enormous returns for me. And I hope that that continues to grow. I really do. And I believe that it will as well. There you go, guys. That is my Tejero portfolio. If you like the look of Tejero and you're interested in signing up to the platform, if you use my referral link, which is in the video description, you can get 20 euros of commissions reimbursed when you invest on the platform. So do go check that out down below. Also, I'd love to know your thoughts on today's video. Are you investing in anything outside of Trading212 because it's not available in the platform? Do you wanna see more updates on this um, Tejero portfolio? Why not leave a comment? Let me know your thoughts. That's all from today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure you tell another millennial that this channel is where the good stuff goes down. Be sure to check out the Millennials With Money social media and internet pages, and also the other videos on this channel. I'll see you on the next one. And let's get this money.